Welcome back to this session of Off the Cuff uh, with Steve Roberts. It's my pleasure today to introduce Joe Lett. Uh, welcome, Joe, to, to this Rob. discussion. And uh, looking forward to talking with you about the uh, Steve Roberts, and particularly in this session, the 1970s, the uh, Coleman, uh, Suzuki, yourself, uh, Steve Roberts, and Dickie Lawton the incredible efforts that you guys put together. Uh, and I wanted to try and summarise it, and I had a look back at the uh, Motorcycle New Zealand Hall of Fame induction of Steve Roberts, and I'm just going to quickly read from that. Uh, Steve was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2017, and this is what was said, amongst other things. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, Roberts turned his attention to road racing. Uh, he teamed up with notable tuner Dick Lawton and Suzuki importer Rod Coleman to build special Suzuki road, mach road race machines in the, in the hands of Jeff Perry, uh, Keith Turner, Dale Wiley and others. These machines were the combination to beat in the world uh, and up against factory races of Yamaha and, and other uh, breeds. In 1971, Keith Turner took on the 500cc World Championship on a Steve Roberts bike and he was the runner-up. So it's a big time in New Zealand motorcycling and you were right in the middle of it in that team. So yeah. how, did that, uh, how did that come about, Joe, for you? Uh, how did you find yourself there? Well, I'd started as an apprentice with Coleman's in 61 and just um, things, obviously in those days you couldn't buy a factory, a factory racing bike so they had to be modified from street bikes and the likes of the T20 Suzuki and the T500, they were all started off as road bike motors and then heavily modified. And Dickie Lawton was a real master. He, he, you know, he just went to levels that other people had never seen and, and his things used to, used to fly, no doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and your role in it through that 70s period, you were riding, you were putting them together, you were helping put, putting them together, you were doing the operations side, weren't you? Well, yeah, I, I helped Ron in 69 with this bike here behind us. That, that Ron I, being Ron Grant. Ron Grant, yes. yes. When he first came in 69, mm -hmm. Rod had seen him riding in the States and um, he, he, he obviously said he had some talent, so... Um, they negotiated a deal and Coleman's brought him down here in 69. So, uh, and I helped Ron unpack that bike in 69, mm -hmm. just just prior to the Boxing Day race at Whanganui. Right. Yeah. And from there, I actually built up five of these mm -hmm. um, and a couple of 500s. Yeah. They were a lot of work. And then Dickie did all the, um, all the motor work and things like that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was, it was some good times. Some big time, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're talking two strokes, of course. They're all two the strokes. Two, all two stroke era. Yep. And prior to that, you'd been, you'd been in the English era of riding the, the, yeah, the I had know, a, four strokes. I had a couple of seven Rs, a long stroke one and then a short stroke one. Mm -hmm. And then I got a 500 Manx Norton. Um, and we all thought those were the bee's knees then. Yeah. But when these two strokes turned up, you didn't have to have 500 cc to have the same or yeah. very similar sort of performance. Yeah, sure. And this is a 250 here. This is it? a 250. Yeah. 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 So yeah. a 250, 500s, 750, two strokes. So yeah. Suzuki yeah. engined. Yeah. Well, the 750 came a little bit later, mm -hmm. but the 250 first. That's um, actually a 67 model road bike that was made from. Right. Um, so just much modified from a, from a, an ordinary T20 road bike. Yeah. Um, obviously the 500 was from the T500, uh, which came out about a year later. Mm -hmm. and, and then, um, yeah, so it was, and Ron Grant, when he came to New Zealand in 69, he bought, he really changed racing after that date because he came wearing coloured leathers. Yeah. Everyone was in black before that. Yes. And, um, yeah. It really, it really lit the scene up, and yeah. I think it, it was probably the, the probably the the biggest time of all yes. for yes. for advancement in, yes. in in road racing in New Zealand. 
And that led through into the Led through into the series, Marlborough series, which huge, is, wasn't it? that was huge. We had, yeah. you know, ex, well, there's even had like chaps that would had world champions come here. Yes. Um, yeah. We had one, um, one time, Luke and Nelly, Marco Luke and Nelly. We got a good photo of him, still upside down on the overhead bridge at Wanganui, oh, yeah. and the next year he's world champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was big stuff. Big, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the likes of Warren, the late Warren Willing, mm -hmm. yes. uh, Greg Hansford, and all those. Ron Grant, Pat Hennon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pat used to come and stay with us each year. He, yeah. he, he was, um, yeah. you know, he, he was another world beater, yes. and of course. Jeff Perry. Tell us, tell us a bit more about Jeff because Jeff, um, uh, we lost Jeff in the in the nineteen seventy three. Seventy three, yeah. I think. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of viewers would probably not know about him, but it would be worth just giving a your your involvement with Jeff Perry because he was huge, wasn't he? he won it, the American it, Championship. Jeff was a young a young fella that I first met. Um, well, when I say young fella. He wasn't that much younger than us, you know, um, but we always called him a young fella. But he came down just out of school and he rode a T20 road bike down and he had that, he'd had that T20 at Wonga Ray and he won races on that, just the road T20. Mm -hmm. And he certainly had a future. Of course, his father was, what, about 40 times, yeah. 41 times New Zealand champion. He was the man, yeah. wasn't he, in earlier Len times? Perry, yeah. yeah. And Jeff came down and spent a bit of time working at Coleman's, like they did in those days. Mm. Um, they'd come and work at the distributors for a while, to, yeah. supposedly to try and <laughs> ingrain something in for them. But yeah. Jeff just wanted to be a racer, obviously. Yeah. And um, he, he was damn good. Mm. And the good thing was he actually ended up Staying with us, well, with my wife and I, in Wanganui for about 10 months. He lived with us. So we got to know him really, really well, and we'd stay with them in Auckland, and he'd always be down, down with us, yeah. Yes, yeah. Joe, how, that's a two stroke era. And, yes. And, and, and before that, as I said, you've got the, the uh, traditional English um, four stroke era. So, what was it like uh, riding those, the two strokes? Well, they successfully. were, yeah, as, as long as you're in the right gear at the right time, they were fantastic. You, know, you just had to, you couldn't just think, oh, I'll go around one lap in second gear and the next lap in third, yeah. like you could with the four stroke. Yeah. You, yeah. You, um, you didn't have as broad a power band yeah. as on the little two strokes, but yeah. of course you had more gears in the gearbox, so yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. So they were what speed, six or? The little 250 here, they were a six speed. Eh? Six speed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, that was, yeah. was a, probably the, the first production bike, I would think, that came out with six speed. The little T20, that was a stock production motor, whereas the T500, when it was converted, yeah. had its own yeah, special close ratio clusters. Yeah. Crank work had to be done, had reduced the diameter of the crankshaft, then you have to refill the crankcase with what they called stuffing muffs right. and put them back in to bring the crankcase compression back up. So there's a lot more work went into the 500s. Yeah. Sounds like it, yeah. 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 So if I'm, I'm getting this right, that particular era, well, let's take this bike. This started as a, a road going a road bike production with, bike, yep, 250. With, yep, with and, indicators yep. and all the gear. And then it's converted, well, it's changed into a race bike. Yeah. And you mentioned the, the, the Australian guy who eventually bought it has it in the Isle of Man and he goes backwards and forwards racing it he, each he, year. He did for a period. It's still got some of the stickers on there, yeah. where scrutineering stickers where he had it over there. But yeah. I think it's, it's been to the island three, maybe four times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I think he left it over there and then go back the next year and then he might have brought it home for a couple of years and gone back again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this is now yours, uh, you've, yeah. you've got that. Yeah, well, because, because, you know, it had been Jeff's first bike, it was bought out for Jeff to ride, mm -hmm. and he rode it in, at, at um, Boxing Day in Wanganui in 69. Mm -hmm. He had his first ride on, and I think he got second all day to Ron on his one, Ron Grant. Yeah. Um, and then, um, 
yeah, it ended up being pulled apart and bits taken off it and all that. And then it ended up in Australia with John Woodley and he yeah. he rebuilt it for yes. someone, I, um, another chap in between before the previous owner I yes. got it from. Yeah. So extraordinary, extraordinary achievements in that time. Coming back to Steve Roberts, I mean, as I understand, I mean, Steve essentially was with Dick Lawton, yourself and, and Rod, yep. putting together bikes here in this shed, which were faster than the factory, uh, a lot of the factory I, bikes. I think they, they were, and yeah. Steve built frames, um, copied them originally, and then he found that um, he could put a 500 motor in a small, almost a modified 250 frame, yes. and get the whole bike down in size and yes. down in weight. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, they were the ones that, that yeah. really went good. Yeah. Extraordinary achievements from oh, the team. Fantastic. That they're leaving here and going yeah. to the top race circuits in the, in the world, bang, like that. Yeah. I mean, and I think it was 17... Um, I think Steve uh, Roberts said there was some, something like 17 500s or maybe it was a collection of 250s and 500s, but there was a whole order of forks, Seriani forks, oh, wasn't there? That, so it was quite a production yeah. line going on here, I, wasn't there? Yeah, well, the, um, like these little bikes here, as I say, they were a, a, just a road frame um, and Steve modified them by putting a bracing bar from the swing arm pivot up to the top of the steering head. Mm -hmm. um, that's all that happened with the frame, basically. Mm -hmm. Taper roller head bearings and things. Mm -hmm. And then factory kit cylinders, cylinder heads. Steve made the chambers for them. Okay. Steve made the tanks. He made the seats yeah. and the fairings. So, he, mm -hmm. yeah, he's, yeah. yeah. And around here, there's probably moulds for yeah, some of those the likes of the tanks and all he made, and he made yes. a bunch of them. Yes, yeah. 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 Extraordinary productivity oh, yeah. and, and, and skill. Oh, just his skills are just... Yeah. Can I take you back a bit to the beginning of your relationship with the Coleman's and, and use this opportunity particularly to, to just get your observations on the person who really started it all, and that's Percy. Percy yeah. Coleman, and, and I would imagine that Percy was a big figure. He was around there when you started and would have been a, been a major influence he, for you. Bob was running the workshop, and every afternoon, late three o'clock on, Mr. Percy Coleman would turn up. Yeah. And um, then as, as, as I was allowed to go in and play around with my own bikes and all that, I'd be there on a weekend. And he would come down and spend a lot of time down in the workshop because they had a really good workshop, well set up, mm. milling machine and yeah. the glazed drills and yeah. oh, piston finishing machine, all sorts of stuff. Because yeah. yeah. he was a fantastic old fellow and, and he had a crude sort of a dyno and not telling you how many horsepower exactly, it had like a big propeller type thing on it and they'd shift the weights out on it yes. and the further the weights went out and still hold the revs, yes. he knew that motor was going better. So, and that's how he used to make the pistons and all for rods, bikes and all early before I started. Really? But right. there was still a lot of those old pistons and all laying around the place that yeah. he, he had yeah. made and all that. Yeah. Um, there's one great story one time Perhaps one of the weights wasn't tied on, and he was sailing the old thing up one night, revving the hell out of it, yeah. and it shot one of the weights out through the roof. Oh, really? <laughs> the <laughs> old workshop. So yeah. we're talking real yeah. number eight oh, wire stuff. Aren't yeah, we? but yeah, that's how yeah, it was all done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, huge, yeah. huge dynasty, and he was oh. the he was the, the, the star. And though. I just picked up a, another old newspaper. Actually, it, it's. Um, I think it's dated November 1930. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in it, it's a, a photo of Percy Coleman and saying he was winning everything on the Harleys. Yeah. Yes. And this is advertising a company in Christchurch yeah. back then. Yeah. But he was, he was a world champion and yes. 
Yeah. yeah. And, um, and it took took the boys years to even equal. I think yes. Bob equaled his lap times yes. around the mile grass. Yes. But but Percy, yes. and he only had one eye, believe it or not. Yeah. Oh, he did. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. He would lost an eye as a young fella um, yeah. in a workshop accident. Yeah. But what a he he just no he he really he always told me when I'm sweeping up as an apprentice boy he'd come and tell me now you sweep up to the rubbish bin and you sort everything out you don't just get the yeah. then throw the lot out because yeah. some of those nuts could be used again and the yeah. odd bolt could be used again yeah. Yeah. and he he did tell me early on he said you just make sure you. You look after the pennies and the pounds will look after themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he was a great old, yeah, great old yeah, yeah. Huge yeah. figure. Oh, in, in, definitely. In, in, yeah. uh, the man in Wanganui, I can remember my father talking yep. about him and those yep. shots of him in the 1920s and 30s yeah. in America racing. It's, it's astonishing. Yeah. Well, he, yeah, the, on some of the sad days when I'm down there working on things and he'd be doing something. Then he'd start talking and I'd ask him questions about the old days. Well, how hard were the tracks? You know, you didn't have suspension and all that. And he said, well, on some of the worst tracks, yeah. he'd have to bind his thighs up, like bandage yeah. his thighs up, and he, he would be bleeding at the end of a race. <laughs> wow. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, and then the handlebars yeah. turned down like this. It yes. was just... Yeah, 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 extraordinary stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, what do you think was the highlight of your your racing experience for you? In early days, we'd take a couple of bikes, and Dickie Lawton would come up to Wanganui and I had a big van, and we'd load all the gear and go to Pukekohe, and Jeff would be there, and I'd be there on one bike. Now, Jeff could outride me, Jesus, ten to one, and um, but if I could hold him off going down the back straight, mm -hmm. that bike then became the, the test mule. Right. So he'd do some more mods to the other one, we would swap again and right. swap again. So, yeah. Yeah. and it was, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so then that, that was a lot of fun yeah, going up been. there doing that. Yeah. It would have been. I did actually ride John Woodley when he got a, a um, RG500. Mm -hmm. He picked up another damaged one in Australia and sent it out. Mm -hmm. And of course, I bought the frame out here to Steve, and Steve mm -hmm. worked his magic on that. Mm -hmm. And so we built it up, and I had a ride on that RG500, but mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. down at that right. Henia Street yeah. circuit. Yeah. Um, not that I did any good. I, I, it, at the time, I think that RG was probably worth more than my house, so I couldn't, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't afford to bin it or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah.